So why do customers leave? Dan Kennedy, the guru of direct marketing, proposed that 1% of people leave because they died and 3% of people leave because they've just moved on. You can't do much about the ones that died and 3% moved on either geographically or their interests have moved on. So for example, I might not like computer games as much as I used to before. My interests have just moved on. Can't do too much about that. 5% of people leave because of a friend's recommendation. Now, friend's recommendations are really important because the friend's recommendation is powerful when it comes your way, but it's also equally powerful when the, your customers are drawn away from you. There's a little bit you can do about that, but there's not that much you can do about it. 9% switch because of just, there's just a, just a better product or service out there. You can do a little bit about that, keep your product and service on top of, the, on top of its game, I get that, but it might be difficult to move that too quickly. Now, 14% of people leave because of just general dissatisfaction. They're just not happy with the product or service. And these are the ones who will complain and they'll leave and they'll make a bit of a ruckus. And we hear about from them a lot and understand why they leave. And although we might not agree with it, and there's, there's a lot we can do about that. There's a whole industry around dealing with complaints and dissatisfied people. That's 14%. Now, if you add all of those up, they only come up to 32%. That leaves 68% out there that's just not being dealt with. What's the 68%? That's indifference. People who just couldn't care less whether your brand or your product exists or doesn't exist, they can flip to another one. They might be a bit brand loyal, but they don't think about it that much. If you ask them what, what the product or service was like in a survey, they'll say, yeah, it was okay, if they answer at all, because it's just not a big deal in their lives. They're just indifferent about it, and they like, pretty much couldn't care less. Now the problem with those people is that they won't talk when things go south for them or if they just generally get bored and they won't give you their, their customer satisfaction ratings, they won't answer your surveys and if you ask them they'll probably just tell you any old story just to get rid of you. So the problem with those people is that because you can't get the data you don't know what to fix and you don't know if you're doing a great job or a bad job with them. This is where and this is where customer service measurement fails to, to some degree because you won't get that information, you can't deal with it, you're going to be dealing with the other 32% who are telling you a lot of stuff or except for the 1% who died, 31%, but you're only dealing with a small number of people. The way to find out about your product offering for these other people is through direct measurements and operational insights that come from mystery shopping. Now I know I go on about mystery shopping because I own a mystery shopping business but it's still one of the only ways you can get operational data. So you say, I know my strategy is this, and I know we need to execute that, and are we executing what we need to do? Because we know that's successful and we know that works. The indifferent people will not tell you, if you're not connecting with your strategy, they'll just disappear. Once again, Stephen DiPietro from Service Integrity Mystery Shopping, and thanks again for listening in.